This parsley has been washed and dried. Um, now, chopping parsley, believe it or not, there's actually an art to it. Um, years ago, and even in some, some restaurants still today, they say the caliber of a chef is actually how good he is in relation to chopping parsley. So, um, again, you'll see a lot, of, a lot of chopped parsley that looks lumpy and bitty and all this type of stuff. What you want to do is try and get an even flake of parsley that is uniform across. So the first thing that we want to do in relation to the parsley is we want to remove the stalks here. Now, these stalks we won't throw out. Why? Because we're going to use them in a stock. Fish stock that we're going to make later on, okay? So we're going to reserve them, keep them aside. Now, the first thing that we need to do in relation to the parsley is we need to actually bunch it down like so, okay? Get it into a ball, like that, okay? And then start off with our knife. Now, our knife is going, we're going to be chopping like so, but as we're chopping, the knife is going to stay in a stationary position, but what's going to happen is we're going to use our fingers to feed the parsley in towards the knife, okay? So, um, I'll show you what I'm talking about in, as we go forward. So, here we start, have the parsley all bunched together, it's fairly tight, so we're going to begin the chopping process now. So, and again, as you're moving forward, keep flipping the parsley around, okay? Watch your fingers. But you can see by having the parsley the chopping tight, procedure much yeah. more easy. Now, some stock there, and reserve that off. Now, parsley, we're going to do the same thing again. It's a matter of process in relation to the parsley. Just keep folding it back on itself, using the, the side of the knife to actually bunch it together. Keep chopping and chopping, okay? Now you can see what I'm talking about here in relation to bitty and scrappy, okay? It's basically, it's all over, it's, there's no uniform size. So we're just gonna keep going here for the moment and chopping parsley out so. Now we've got to the point the stage where it's beginning to take some sort of a uniform shape. So now what we want to do is we want to begin to run the actual blade much more uh, loosely across the parsley here. So as you can see here now, I'm pulling the parsley in and now what I'm doing is I'm keeping my hand on the front of the blade, I'm using the back of the blade as a triangle like so and running the blade through the actual parsley. Now you want to make sure that you do this on a chopping board because you do not want to do this any, on any other surface other than a chopping board because all you're going to do is completely destroy the blade of your knife, okay? So keep running the blade through like so. Now you can see that the actual parsley is becoming much more uh, even in size. So now that's just about it. We're just about finished there now. Run the blade through a few more times. Pull the parsley in on the back of itself. And make sure that you get any of the larger pieces that may have escaped in on that blade. And we are then, as I said, just about ready to actually finish off here. And now what you can see is you've got a fine parsley, a fine chop, that's uniform, it's even, and now we're ready to use this in our hair crust. Okay guys, thanks. Okay guys, we're uh, gonna use our rosemary now in our fresh hair crust. But before we actually begin using the fresh rosemary, what we wanna do is we wanna heat it, okay? Why do we wanna heat it? Because we're going to be um, bashing the rosemary to actually try and get some of the perfume from the oil to actually come out. Now, um, what we wanna do with this is, as you can see here, I'm dry roasting it, but all I'm doing in relation to the dry roasting is just to get the process going in relation to heating through the actual rosemary stems, okay, and the, and the leaf. You do not want to leave this on for too long because what's going to happen is that the leaf is going to burn. So let's sit down to get our rosemary prepared to go into this hair crust. We've heated the rosemary, 
we've warmed it up so it's getting ready now to actually begin to give us some oil once we begin to bash. Now, in relation to rosemary, we can if we were doing something like a barbecue or whatever, um, we can use these as actual skewers, all right? But that's not what we're gonna to do today. We'll do another video about that again some other time. But what I want you to see here is me pulling the actual, the way the actual the leaves are pulled off, okay? We're pulling down the stem of the rosemary, all right? So, pulling like so. And get them, all those leaves off before we begin to actually bash them. And after we bash, then we're gonna chop. All right, so I'll just finish this off here, and you can see it's not that difficult at all in relation to um, preparing it. Now, that's it. We're ready now to actually prepare the rosemary. So, the first thing that we want to do is we literally want to bash the actual leaves, okay? Now, um, first thing that we need to do is we need to season up the lamb. So we're just so plenty of salt and pepper just across the lamb here like so. And then the lamb's going to go into the pan, we want to seal it out, and then um, we're going to finish it off basically with the crust going on top of that. So, step one, step two, three, four, five. Now, like I said, we're not cooking it off. All we're doing is steaming, okay? So, um, you understand what I'm talking about when we begin to actually get a bit of colour up on the actual, up on the actual uh, lamb itself. You can see these are colouring fairly quick. One thing you do not want to do is to let these lambs, this lamb burn, okay? Okay, so now we're colouring up on that side. We're going to turn the lamb up like so. Okay, so the whole idea of what we're trying to do here, guys, is we're trying to put a, as I said before, we're trying to put a seal all the way around the lamb, that when the hair crust goes onto it, uh, everything is locked inside that hair crust, and the flavor of the hair is actually permeated through into the actual lamb itself. So, okay. Again, we're, under, we're using extreme heat here, guys. We want to get this going fast. So basically, as I said here, that's it, we've just got one more side left on the lamp to seal off, and then we'll be ready to actually start on the crust. Starting off the base for the crust. Now what I have here is I have some finely diced onion, uh, you, you, the rosemary that you saw us prepare earlier on, and also some freshly chopped parsley, which you also saw us prepare. Now I'm giving it a little bit of a seasoning here. I'm going to cook this off until it becomes slightly softened. Then I'm going to add in um, some of the actual oils that we have left over from the lamb seasoning that we did there a while ago. So um, this is going to take about five to ten minutes to prepare. And as I'm going through the different stages of it, I'll bring you through it. Actually, okay, thanks. Herbs have begun to um, break down here, which is exactly what we want to happen. Now the other thing is we don't want to cook these herbs out completely. All we're doing is sweating them off really. Now what I'm going to do to this now is I've got about a half a pound of butter in here. I'm going to add in about a half a pound of white breadcrumbs as well. Uh, equal quantities in relation to actually putting this crust together. So again, you can weigh it out or you can actually judge it by eye. So if it was me and I was doing this for the first time, I'd actually weigh it out. Okay, that's just about ready. Thank you again. 
Yeah. That's it. I'm going to turn the heat off now. And I'm just basically going to work the rest of these crumbs in. And we have, basically we have, not only do we have a hair crust feature, we also have something that resembles stuffing. So you could also use this as also a lamb stuffing if you wished. It's perfectly adequate, very tasty with the lamb, having the rosemary and the fresh parsley, etc. in there. Okay, so that's it. This crust is now ready. I'm going to take it off, I'm going to let it cool. I'm going to get the lamb prepared um, when I'm ready to put the crust on the lamb. Keep it this here. Always take everything in a container that you can easily handle and so it will not be too much waste. Just over the fat, just slightly smear the mustard. Get it all done at the same time, don't be going bits and pieces. All slightly smeared. But heavy enough, and using a Dijon mustard, which is not too hot. If you use an English mustard, it would be very, very hot and would take away from the flavour of the lamb. Leave the rest on it. And the mustard helps give it a good hold so as you don't interfere directly onto the fat, it wouldn't happen. This mustard, all done. Now we're going to dip first and then press on. So as we get a nice package on it, so as you have to containing and it looks like that there. Mustard, dip first, so as you get a hold on it, and get some more stuffing on there. Just keep it going, get the rhythm going. Once you've got enough mustard onto it, you will have enough to pack your whole lamb. You do not want to overdo it either, because if you have too much bread, you will end up burning it in your oven. Just keep packing, keep packing down. All the little crevices that you did earlier, all filled with a nice coating. Down, and packing on. Keep your coating, when you're finished, just keep your coating in the container, fill it down, and then chill it away, put it in the fridge.